getting to the point of making that decision that getting my real estate license is going to be the next step. Yeah, well, uh, so yeah, I went to work for MI Homes in, in new home sales and did that starting in 2003. And I think I stopped doing it in about 2008, 2009. I started with MI and then went to their, their semi-custom builds, uh, showcase homes there for a while as well. And, you know, the market took a, took a little bit of a blip. And, you know, you're in your 20s making significant amount of money for a kid in his 20s working retail hours meaning that i get to go out and have fun at night and, on the, and uh don't have to wake up till you know 10 o'clock to be in the models <laughs> of one and it was great but as you start to develop a family as you start to grow and frankly as the money started to decrease because one you're not selling as much um they've yeah. reduced they've they've teamed up people so your income There's the call. <laughs> uh, so you have a certain difference between those. It's nice because you don't have sure. to cross it. You're sitting in the model. The marketing department is basically bringing people in. But your income's pretty limited. Um, you're, you're not able to just, I mean, heck, if I want to go to a concert in Cincinnati tomorrow, I can do that. Right. Couldn't do it then. You're really an employee opposed to now where you're more of an entrepreneur. So I did that for six years. And uh, when the market took a downturn that I, then I tried an investment company and then I uh, got my license shortly after. On the investment side of things, and I didn't even know you're on the, on the new, new build rep side of things. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I mean, you rode, you rode the right, the, the right side of the roller coaster, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, with the investment company, was it real estate based or just, it was, it was a, okay. um, yeah, it was actually uh, one of uh, Don Kenny's companies. Okay. And, when he, he was building, and I assume he still does it the same way, would build multifamily. But what they do is they individually parcel the units. So yeah. we were working with selling those and still great investments, especially for like, if you have kids, you can buy one, do a 15 year loan, you have college paid for in 15 years. Yeah. Um, so they're really good investment standpoint. But when the market tanked, the ability to get financing for those really fell through. I mean, you went from 10% down to 30% down and the appeal dropped quite a bit as well. And I decided, mm -hmm. hey, you know, the market's terrible. Let's get into real estate. So, <laughs> so, so you decide to get your license, right? Um, obviously, you have, um, you know, your situation is a little bit more unique because you kind of got in. I would say most of the time, real estate's not the first choice, yeah. right? It's, it's, but you are in the real estate space in, in some capacity for the majority of your, your career. Um, but when you decided to make that switch over to the real estate agent side of things, you know, 100% commission based, you know, all of those things, did you have supporters? Did you have doubters? You know, what, oh, was, doubters, what was some yeah. of the thought process? Yeah, what was some of the thought process at that point? Yeah, I mean, you go from, and I was just starting a family or getting ready to, to get married and stuff. And you go from insurance, you go from steady income to something where you're basically going out on a limb. The big advantage coming from the new home side is I had building credibility mm -hmm. uh, where most people who are getting their license are coming from another industry or right. are extreme. Or I was, I was still very young. I mean, I was you know 30 at the time, probably, but you don't have that building credibility. So it was nice that I could take that and just and run with it a little bit better. Um, so so that was that was nice. Um, I have support because I've been here for so long. I have a lot of people that that I can immediately reach out on. Um, unfortunately, at the time, the computer systems didn't allow me to take a list of everybody I'd sold houses to at MI with me. Uh, that would have been nice to have, but it was, uh, yeah. But I, you have a built-in advantage when you do more of a lateral move into the industry. Right, right. What, um, so what year did you actually get licensed? 2009? 2012, actually. Yeah, 2012, so I, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, so I was with MI until nine, and then, uh, and then, yeah, did, just tried transactional business because I took a, sh a job short term with uh, IGS Energy, thinking I'll try something yeah. else. And that's sort of the same thing. Great company, um, great local roots in Dublin, just not, not really my thing. I'm not, I can't call you once every three years and be like, Hey, buy something. It's just not, <laughs> not who I am. So it's a, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I honestly think that is, um, one of the biggest things a lot of agents struggle with getting into the business and why I love having different agents on this, on this podcast is because 
there's no right way to do real estate. Oh, you no. know, you just said, you just said, Hey, you, you know, the self-awareness, right. Of like, that's not who I am. Like for me, I could pound phones and, and do all of that. Catch me at networking events, probably not going to work out. Right. You know, the relationship base of, you know, me and the community, probably not the, that that's probably not going to work for me either. But I think a lot of agents do struggle with that because yeah. They see that, oh, this person's killing it on internet leads. Oh, this person's killing it on, you know, uh, direct mail. Oh, this person's doing open houses. And, you know, agents think that they have to be doing it all instead of just really looking at what they enjoy doing. Yeah. And I mean, I tell people always asking me one of the general questions is what are the big issues you see new agents make? And I think one of them is following training that does not fit their skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want me to sit and make a hundred phone calls a day, I'm going to fail. That is not a, that's not a skill set. I really, the methodical aspect of that's not something that I can do. Um, it's not something I want to do. It's not sustainable. So I may succeed for three months doing that, but yeah. you know, there's a lot of different kinds of agents out there. You got to find what actually fits your skill set and what you enjoy to make it sustainable. I mean, I, I built my business up through community involvement. And, edu and education. I mean, being being involved with the board, going to a lot of meetings, knowing more than most people, but also go doing those local meetings. I mean, I started a PAL Facebook group that now has 15,000 people, which is more yeah. people than actually live in PAL. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, you've got to find what you got. And you may be able to sit there and make 100 calls a day. It's so great. Yeah. Do that. But don't follow and don't try to be somebody you're not because you're not going to do it.